so I can start working on the horn. It's one of the areas that really inspired me, interested me to do this drawing. Now on the underside of the horn, you've got a lot of this warm, bounced light. Now these are the areas, these are the details, the things to look out for to separate your work from uh, beginner and novice work. It's really training your eyes to see these subtle differences. Okay, now the bottom of the horn is that colour because the field around it, the ground around it, is warm, rich, and a sandy colour. So that's bouncing from the sunlight, the strong sunlight is hitting that and bouncing up into the shadow. Okay, it's reflected light. Here I'm just looking at blocking in a main colour, just working out if I put a bit of a, a warmish brown down first and then more of a cooler, lighter colour on top, if it gives me that colour that I'm seeing or close to that colour I'm seeing in the reference photo. Now you can test it out and I have tested it out on small pieces of the pastel matte paper like I showed earlier on and I got a load of my pencils out then but I also like to, to refine that a bit more and test it again actually on the drawing where I can judge it against other areas around it. So you can see I'm putting a warmish colour down and then this light grey on top and that's giving me a really close colour and plenty of texture for the horn. Okay, so that's going to work. I'm happy with that. The horn is all about texture on that bottom section and then a smooth surface on the top. So I'm putting that general colour in first. I'm not pushing hard. I don't want this to be super soft or blended perfectly. I'm using the paper the slight texture on the paper to add to the realism and the texture of the horn. So there's no need for me to be blending and pushing all of this pastel into the surface. Now I'm also going to indicate where I've got some of these darker recesses, possibly from where the bison have been fighting or digging at something or pushing the horn against something. We've got all small scrapes and ridges all add in interest. Once again I'm not pushing with that pastel pencil much at all, it's really light pressure. I want to be able to put a good few layers on top of this to create and simulate the texture I'm seeing in the photograph. I'm gradually getting more accurate all the time. I'm squinting my eyes a lot so that I'm just concentrating on the major masses, the light's dark, the shape that I'm seeing in the reference. And with pastel we're generally working from dark to light or from a general blocked in colour then to dark then to light. Up here we've got grey on the edge that pretty much goes up to the top where we've then got that very light area. You can see that glassine paper over on the side. So I'm just resting my hand on that. Now that's the type of paper if you buy um, pastel mat in the box, in between the indiv individual sheets, you'll have a sheet of this glassine paper separating it. So when you pull the sheet out, you can pull this out as well and that's useful because it's acid free and you can use it to rest your hand on as I'm doing here. And I use a magnet because I've got a magnetic whiteboard and I'm just got a magnet on the glassing paper to make sure it's not actually moving then side to side and smudging the drawing.
So that's the main color, the main darks in place. I've got that highlight there, so I'm keeping that quite clean. The brighter I make that highlight, the more that horn is going to feel and appear that is coming towards the viewer. So that's going to increase that three dimensional effect that I want to create. And now I'm building up the texture on top of that under layer, so I'm going a lot lighter now. Now it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph. I say that a lot in my videos, but for realism, you really don't have to put every little tiny bit in unless you want to. If that's what you enjoy doing and you have to, after photo realism, you could do that. But I'm more after just a general uh, representation of what I'm seeing rather than, you know, exact photo realism. I like to have areas that are more painterly and areas that are more detailed so that I'm directing the viewer's eye. Notice I'm not covering up all of the underlayer. You need to allow plenty of that to still show through. Still light pastel strokes around this edge. It goes around the corner. And you can see I'm directing my strokes as well, like I'm seeing in the reference photo. Okay, that's starting to look a lot more realistic. I can go even lighter in places and add more detail. Got a bit more of that, this subdued grey I'd call it, around here, going up the horn. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It'll all look like it's coming even further forwards when I get the real darks of the the fur and that shadow area in place. That's, that's what will really make it pop. So up here we've switched now from those um, kind of sandy gray colors more to a blacky gray or bluey gray up here you don't need to worry about technical terms don't need to be concerned about that we're using our eyes to see the colors and the tonal value in particular the most important in the reference photo and not all the colors the subtleties are showing up on the screen compared to what i can see with my eyes of course so a bit more grey here. Now if you're after a rich dark brown, Karen Darsh do two dark browns, they're worth getting. I don't own many Karen Darsh. For me, they, they're just a bit too soft. And I've had things in the past where I've noticed quite gritty marks, uh, gritty particles in the Karen Darsh, so I don't buy many of those. But the dark browns are definitely darker than any other browns you'll find in the pastel pencil ranges. So those I keep on hand and they do really come in useful on wildlife art especially because very often we want a rich dark brown.
when the basics are in place as they are now that's when I start to refine everything so I've gone from looking at the main masses of tone and color and blocking those in to now thinking okay so I've got that in place now what's different what else do I need to put in are there dark areas that I need to add as I'm doing now to create more texture I like to get the darks in place first and then I can come in with the lights on top because in real life that's pretty much how it works the lights are on the surface so I've come in with a sharper pencil hitting highlights in various areas that off play or play off against the light and the dark that's what's giving that appearance of texture because remember unlike with oil paint where you can sometimes put a very thick paint on a surface with pastel we're just working on a perfectly flat surface there's no ridges or texture it's all an, an illusion that I'm creating so it's that play against light and dark and that's what I'm doing now just add in more of the texture and notice every now and again every couple of strokes I'll turn the pencil you see I'm just turning it a little bit after I've done the stroke that allows that pencil tip to stay sharp a lot longer than if I just held it in place all the time so I'm not twirling it as I'm doing the mark if you look at the writing on the pencil you see every couple of strokes I turn it every couple of strokes I turn it so I was keeping the tip of the pencil more conical and I don't get a flat edge on it Now working on the top section obviously I need to go a lot lighter with pastel mat paper and because I haven't put much pastel down at all yet on this top section I can do many more layers. So let's lighten it up on the top on the tip as well. Now that's a Carbothello pencil I'm using so when you see me using pencils and all of the shaft is coloured that's generally my Carbothello pencils and the two brands I use more often than not my two favorite brands are Carbothello and Pitt okay so tidying up that edge and then it goes a lighter gray around here and up there as well and I can tidy that edge even more when I put that you know the background fur of the bison in I like the the difference between the smooth top part of the horn and the rough textured part of the horn that's very interesting to, to draw and to paint on subjects okay so that's all starting to come together see I don't have to even blend into the surface I don't need a stump or anything I can just blend with my pencil it's good enough it's only a small area Look at that lighter tone down here as well. Now, when you look at the reference and you look at my drawing, there's a massive difference. As I said, they don't both show uh, up perfectly equally on the video camera anyway. But you can see plenty of, plenty of differences between the horn that I'm doing and the reference photo but mine still looks like a bison horn and I've still got a bit more work to do on it but you can see what I mean when you don't need to get things exactly photorealistic
and now I'm putting in the brightest highlights. Remember with pastel, as I said earlier on, we generally are working by blocking in, you know, the, the average color that we see in the main mass of color, then putting in the darker texture, then gradually working lighter and lighter and lighter with the pencils, adding the lighter texture, more refinement. And of course you can come back in and add some more darks if you want to at any stage. But that's how it generally works, so at least the way I do it. The highlights are on top, so I put them on last. bit more of that medium gray now this is more of the final refinement I will come back to this again I want to punch up a few colors the purples I'm seeing it in the bounce light I want to put those in as well here's a subtle version of it this is kind of a, a purpley color it's another one of those Caran d'Ache pencils I probably got about 10 and uh, this is another one that I use every now and again I want to darken this bit of shadow here and as I said it's only when that background here has got this darks in place that this will really start to, to pop and look three dimensional. So just a few more touches and I think that's about it for the for the horn as I said I'll, I'll come back and work on it a little bit more at the end of the drawing just when I can judge it by all of the hay and the texture that's around it and perhaps punch up the highlight a bit more as well but that's pretty much how you draw a bison horn. And so I'm adding the brighter highlights now on top of the horn so that's adding to that three-dimensional appearance that we've got. And because the underwork is quite dark on the that thick fur, it's looking fairly realistic already. But it's going to look even better when I get the real darks in on the fur, especially in that shadow. It's going to make this look like it's, it's popping forward a lot more. So pencils, not particularly sharp. Going lighter and brighter all the time as these highlights are sitting on the surface on the reference photo that's how I want them to be on the drawing as well. Now obviously I can go even brighter if I want to but the brightest of all the highlights I reserve them usually for when I've done 99% of the drawing and I can see then if I need to even go brighter again so I don't generally go with the pure whites to um, early on I usually wait a bit so I hope you've enjoyed this short video there's the full video over on my patreon art channel it's on tier 3 and I go into lots and lots of details on the whole of the bison drawing and you get access to six years worth of other videos that I put up as well so literally hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of videos hope to see you there real soon just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques 
and as mentioned I've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.